The Creative Psychotherapist is the official podcast of the Creative Clinician's Corner, a practice building resource for creative psychotherapists. TCP Podcast is the cast for creative, expressive, and experiential focused psychotherapists curious to learn how to design, build, and scale a thriving private practice. Your host, Raina Lombardi, interviews successful therapists about the tools and strategies they have used to develop creative focused practices. They also talk about the products, services, and side hustles they have developed using their knowledge and creativity to enhance their therapy practices, make a greater impact in their communities, and diversify their income streams. Welcome. Now here's your host, Raina Lombardi. Thanks for tuning in to the Creative Psychotherapist podcast. I'm your host, Raina Lombardi. And um, again, we're switching up the format a little bit right now, uh, given the current uh, circumstances and the state of what's happening in the world right now. Um, It just, to me, felt more appropriate to do some individual episodes Um, really speaking to different topics related to things that all of us might be experiencing right now versus continuing to um, put out the episodes that I've already recorded that are really focused on practice building. And right now I feel like it's more about how do we respond to the current crisis, the current set of circumstances, how do we adapt and pivot and make adjustments in the way we're practicing while staying sane and um, remembering to take care of ourselves. Um, And so that's really going to be the focus of the topic today is uh, really about self-care. And, um, you know, most therapists are very familiar with self-care. We talk about it with clients. We talk about it amongst ourselves. Um, People submit a lot of conference presentations on therapist self-care, and I see a lot of trainings about it um, because it is really an important topic. And I like to think about self-care not as the activities that we do every once in a while, to take care of ourselves or to help us feel better, um, but more about our daily practices, the things that we do day in, day out, um, throughout our week, months, and year uh, to maintain our mental health, our physical health, our spiritual health, um, all of those things. And so sometimes I think it's really difficult to maintain routine and um, structure when there are so many changes going on in the world, um, in the way people are working. Um, Just everything right now is so different for many people. For others, it might feel kind of normal because perhaps they've already been Um, creating a practice that was totally online and so they're used to working from their home office and they're used to being home all day and so not much has really changed but for those of us that are used to going out um, into the field whether that be to our office or maybe there's a group practice and you're um, in an office with other therapists or Perhaps you're one of those mobile therapists that go out to different people's homes or agencies in the community and you're serving there and that may have stopped. And, um, and so your routine may have changed. I encourage you to um, really think about trying as much as possible to maintain your routine and structure um, as best you can. So that might include, um, how you start your day. What's, what do you do to start your day? Um, I think everybody has a different practice. Uh, for the past few years, I've really been trying hard to start my day, um, working out. That's usually the first thing I do. I, um, go to the gym 
and uh, some days I will work out at the gym and then um, shower there and then go straight to work from there. Other days I might work out and then come home and get ready. Um, but for the most part, that is part of um, my self-care practice. At the beginning of the month, before all of this um, started to unfold, um, I ended up getting the flu, uh, the H1N1 flu, which is, was weird. I was like, oh, I didn't realize that was still happening, but apparently it was pretty prevalent. Um, and now kind of looking back, I'm like, well, thank goodness it was that, not um, in the coronavirus. Um, <clears throat> as cases were starting to become identified in the States at that time. Um, but with that, I like couldn't go to the gym. And even after I started feeling better, I was like still having a lot of congestion. And so I um, didn't go to the gym. I was still doing active stuff like outside and walking and hiking and things like that, but not actually going into um, the gym the way I normally would to start my day in the morning. And I was contemplating it last week. I, I was really strongly contemplating it, but I decided against it. Um, and then a couple of days after um, part of our county, um, you know, emergency order issue was to close down the use of all gyms. So I haven't had that. So I really like hadn't worked out in about three weeks, but this past week I was like, nope, I really need to get back into my routine because that's what helps me. That's what gives me energy. That's what gives me motivation. I just feel so much better when I work out. And that's again, part of my self-care practice. Um, and so I figured out a way to use what I have at home um, to work out. And I've been doing that and supplementing it with walks around the neighborhood. Um, it's different. It's not the same, but it's still something. And it's helping me to um, try and maintain that continuity in structure and routine, which, again, just helps me to feel better. Um, like, even though there's a lot of unknowns happening, there's a lot of chaos happening. I can continue to create order and structure in my day that helps me to function my best. So that's something that I've been doing. And I know there are other um, people I've seen, other therapists too, um, talking about that and like organizing groups to work out together, um, which is interesting. I guess somebody's like creating a video workout video and then other people are joining along. I don't know how it would work to do like an actual like um, group workout via Zoom. That would be kind of funny. Um, but so the physical piece, like how do you take care of your physical health? So that should be part of your self-care practice. Maybe um, you usually might go out and go into the salon and get your nails done um, or get a pedicure or a massage or something like that and that might not be able um, or you, you might not be able to do that or access that but um, how could you recreate that practice at home even though you know somebody else isn't giving it to you and taking care of you in that way how can you take care of yourself in that way and use this time at home to do that um, <clears throat> some other physical piece you know, might be your diet, exercise and diet, right? Those things go hand in hand. So um, how are you maintaining, you know, your regular eating habits, healthy eating habits? Um, are you continuing to cook for yourself? Um, have you found ways to continue to access healthy foods? I think in some communities that might be difficult right now. I know um, the grocery stores have been out of a lot of things and so we might have to pivot and um, do things a little bit differently there and um, eat a little bit differently but you know as much as possible trying to continue 
that part of making sure that you're eating well and, and enough and hydrating enough and drinking enough water, um, all of those things are really important in your self-care. You know, as therapists, we know, and I know I talk with my clients about what happens when we get dehydrated and how that impacts our mood. Um, what happens when we get hungry, right? Um, like one of the um, acronyms that we talk about when working with um, different addictive behaviors is HALT, right? Are, am I hungry? Am I angry? Am I lonely? Or am I tired? <laughs> Right. And sometimes if you're not drinking enough water, that can lead to feeling fatigued and, and being tired. If you're not eating enough or, you know, eating well, that could lead to feeling angry, um, hungry and tired. Um, <clears throat> so there's that. And then there's also that piece of like, well, sometimes the, the physical part of taking care of my physical body has to do with um, being with people. So I might not be able to do things the way I normally would with others, but people are getting super creative and finding ways to do like a dinner date with people via Zoom. Um, so continuing to provide that um, connection, that social connection with others um, and eating, you know, there's, there's ways to go about it. It's not the same, but it can serve um, to feel like we're not alone, um, even though we might be alone for a large part of the day. Attention creative clinicians. Are you having a hard time trying to figure out how to show up in your practice or pivot or just manage it all during these uncertain times? We have a special practice support group now available online. Everyone is being impacted by the current global pandemic and your clients need you now more than ever. We believe it's important they have access to the services that you provide now and when social distancing mandates are lifted. We want you to have all the tools you need to step up and help your clients, so we're here to help. We know financially things might be in the air right now, but we have three webinars we'd like to offer you about how your therapy practice can continue to support clients during these times and as well as after it all levels out. Under normal circumstances, we would charge for a service like this, but that didn't feel right given the current circumstances. We decided to offer these webinars on a give what you can system. You decide what you're able to give based on the benefit of the information you receive. If you know you're not in a position to donate anything, please join us anyway. We don't want anyone feeling like they have to do this alone right now because they can't afford access to support. We are offering three webinars on the following topics telehealth, money mindset, and marketing. Visit www.creativeclinicianscorner.com to sign up. The other thing is uh, when you, when it comes to your self-care, what are you doing to like manage um, your emotional reaction in this? And I've seen in a number of the like therapist Facebook groups that are out there, people asking questions about that. Like, how are you managing your own anxiety and fears and panics um, in this situation and continue to be available for clients? And so that's really important. And part of your self-care might be to really tune into that. And if you're struggling to regulate at this time, then it, then it might be a good call to say, I'm actually going to pause my practice. I'm going to pause seeing clients if that is a possibility um, and take a couple of mental health days to take care of yourself and to work on managing um, your fears and anxieties about the uh, current situation. Because if you're in crisis and your limbic system is activated, and you're really emotional, um, one, you, I, I don't think it's possible to like really tune in and be present with the other person and be able to listen, like really listen to them and, um, and be in the moment because 
you're fighting with that um, overwhelm that keeps popping up. And so, you know, that might be part of what you need to do is just say, you know what, I, I got to cancel my appointments for today and tomorrow, and I'm just going to focus on managing um, what's going on for me so that I can get back into a more regulated state so that I can continue to show up and be there for other people in the way that I know I'm trained to do. So <clears throat> that might be one thing, you know, I think for a lot of people, they turn to things like um, mindfulness and meditation at this time. That could be uh, a very helpful thing. Yoga, um, obviously, uh, there's a lot of overlap, right? That could be part of your physical health, part of your spiritual health, part of your emotional health, right? Um, and just making sure that you're attending to your feelings in that way. Um, it might be, you know, going back to whatever your creative practice is, you know, and, and connecting there and expressing yourself there. If you're a painter or if you're a dancer or a writer, um, there are so many ways that you could um, work through that in that way, in the same way that you help clients do the same. Um, I've seen people making really funny and creative um, videos in response to what's going on. And I think that is really helpful as it gives people a sense of um, mastery and control and it's allowing them to express their fears and vulnerabilities and be silly and um, still find a way to um, I guess find levity in the situation right like we can all pull into uh, laughter and um, find ways to connect to, you know, things that make us happy, things that are funny, things that bring joy, um, identifying what those are for you and making sure that you're attending to them um, seems really important right now. I know for me, I've been doing some artwork when I can. Um, in response to the situation. And I've also been using my creativity to figure out ways to respond and to do things in a new way that um, I normally wouldn't. And that has been helpful because um, it gives me a sense of like, well, I'm still being productive. I'm still, um, aligned with my purpose and taking action aligned with my purpose and um, and I'm continuing to move ahead without um, getting bogged down in all of the fears which I do have it's not that I don't have them it's not that I'm not experiencing my own anxiety in this I, I am um, I'm just really working at um, trying to, again, manage it in the best way that I can, really, um, you know, continuing with my routine in self-care. Like I said, you know, starting off the day, working out, I'm still getting up, I'm still, um, I might be, you know, not seeing people in person, but I'm still getting dressed as though I am. <laughs> I'm still, um, you know, going through the day as though it is business as usual, even though it is very different. Um, because that continuity of doing things um, is, you know, helping me to stay grounded and to be able to show up and be there for the people that um, need me to be there right now. So what can you do to really work on managing your emotions. Um, you know, for folks that are struggling with anxiety, one of the things that I have found helpful is to really limit my news consumption 
around the topic. It could be easy for me to be checking my phone and looking for updates, you know, every few minutes. I know that I need to stay informed, one. So I'm not avoiding it altogether because the news information that's coming out is helping me to make um, informed decisions about how I'm choosing to operate my business. However, I'm also um, really being strategic about looking at certain times of the day. During my work day, I'm not looking at all. I'm still committed to operating in my business and I'm just committing day by day. Today, this is how I'm operating. Tomorrow might be different based on the information that comes through. But today and for right now, this is how I'm operating. And then at the end of the day, um, I do check the news and look to see, okay, did my um, county and local, um, you know, uh, community make any changes as to how we're supposed to be operating and what we're supposed to be doing? Yes or no, that then guides my decision on how I'm going to structure my day the next day. Um, <clears throat> or did something come down from the state, right? And keeping abreast of that has been really important um, because I have had to make significant changes um, to how I work. I um, am a supervisor of people working towards their LMHC license and the state board issued changes as to how um, people are to be providing telehealth services if they're not yet licensed and they're under supervision. And so um, it was important for me to stay on top of that, um, but I don't need to be obsessively checking it, right? I'm checking it every day, but not multiple times a day, every day, all day long. And that too is helping to manage the anxiety because I'm not looking to be like, oh my gosh, what's going on? But I'm looking to see, okay, what's the important information here that I need to guide my decision-making in my practice, okay? So that's one thing. The other thing is when I get home from work, because um, I've still been going into the office, even if I, again, I'm not even if nobody's coming in there, um, which I have had days and nobody comes in, it's just me. Um, it, I'm there. And that helps me again to stay in my, um, in my structure and routine. Now that might change again, because I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow and I don't know what's going to happen um, on Monday or whatever. There, there could be issues from the government saying, you know, nope, you're not considered an essential um, worker, therefore you have to stay in the house. Okay, well, if I have to stay in the house, I will set up a space for myself and, um, and that's where I will continue to operate and I will continue to um, work there, you know, via remotely and, and online. But again, I'm gonna continue with that process of, not obsessively checking and only checking um, during those designated times that I've selected so that I can gain the information necessary for me to operate safely. Um, but one of the things that I've been doing when I come home is a jigsaw puzzle. Um, my husband got a crazy hard jigsaw puzzle. We started it last weekend and it's taking up the entire dining room table. We haven't made a whole lot of progress because it's really quite hard. Um, but it's been very helpful for me because I can channel some of my anxious and nervous energy there and it allows me to focus on a problem that I can solve. I can't solve what's going on in the world. There's, there's no way to do that. Um, but I can solve that puzzle and I can focus that energy, right? Because what's the purpose of anxiety? Anxiety wants you to solve a problem. It wants you to come up with a solution. That is the reason why we feel anxious, right? You know, we talk about like um, the eustress as a motivator for getting, um, things done and, and taking action in some way, right? It's like anxious energy saying, hey, you need to um, come up with a solution and fix this problem. Um, well, I can't, you know, I can't fix that problem. 
but I can focus on fixing the puzzle <laughs> and putting it back to um, its original, you know, full um, image. So that's just something that I've been doing, but you might have other um, ideas of what to do. Certainly, if you have space in your home to be creative and engage in the creative process, that's a wonderful thing to do. Um, journaling, that's another thing to do. Um, one of the, the things that I've been doing online is really, um, making a point to share uh, positives about what's happening, right? There's so much panic um, in the realm of social media. And so everything that I'm putting out there, whether it's my personal page, if it's on the Facebook groups that I use, I apologize. You're hearing my dog in the background because I'm recording at home and I normally would record in the office, but She's hearing something outside. Um, I, now I lost my train of thought too. Oh my goodness. Um, oh yeah, positive. So um, in order to try and combat that, I'm really trying to put out content and share posts about positive things that people are doing, acts of compassion, acts of kindness. Um, I'm sharing information with my colleagues. I have a local Facebook group that I, um, ad, I'm the administrator for. Um, and so it's probably a little over 100 of us, and most of us are in private practice in, um, in the area. And so I've, everything that um, I've been learning, I've been sharing there with them, and they've also been contributing and sharing information as it comes in. And, um, you know, just really, really focusing on not becoming caught up in the panic and um, contributing to um, how we can shift our mindset to one of flexibility, because in order to survive, we know we have to be flexible, we have to be able to adapt change is inevitable it's happening all the time if i resist and fight change then i can become swallowed by it and i don't want to become swallowed by it and i don't want you guys to become swallowed by it it's important for all of us to be able to be flexible and in order to do that you know if we have an attitude of gratitude and focus on the positives that are happening what are po what are what are people doing in your community right now that are helping, right? If we look hard enough, um, we will find that there are lots of people that are really trying to help and um, provide support. So that's another thing that I'm doing um, in terms of self-care. You know, I think for a lot of people um, that are spiritual, this may also be a very trying time because um, at least in my community that the churches are under a mandate not to be in operation so if attending church services was part of your self-care practice that could be pretty difficult so how can you incorporate um, your own practice and just still hold that time and space as sacred for yourself and continue to engage in um, your spiritual practice just in a very personal way. Um, maybe it's through, you know, still getting ready to go as you normally would and um, reading, or um, maybe it's, um, you know, you sit silently in prayer during that time or meditate during that time. Um, or maybe you find a way to access um, some services uh, online. I haven't looked, but I would imagine that there's probably um, plenty of those types of things on YouTube. If you look hard enough, you'll find what you need. And I think a lot of a lot of churches have, you know, found ways to record and and post their services. So. Um, 
different people may still be continuing to do that, but you can check in with your um, your church or um, organization that you belong to and uh, and see what they're doing. And so that might be something that you can continue to do. But again, just focusing on continuing to, as much as possible, maintain your regular structured schedule. And um, I mean, this is stuff that I talk with my clients about as well. I, I think it's very important, especially for families. I work a lot with kids. And so um, <clears throat> when this happened, they were on spring break. So they were already kind of in that vacation mode. But then they went back to school totally online um, last week. And it's originally set to last until April 15th, but there's a lot of discussion that it may continue for the duration of this year. And so how, how can we support them so that they can continue to learn and still access those services, right? They still need to be um, participating in their educational experience. And the best way to do that is to continue with the structure, right? We are still getting up at our same time. We're still doing our morning routine. And instead of me driving you to school or walking you to the bus stop, we are setting up at, you know, whatever the specific place is and I encourage them to do it in the same place. You know, if you're going to do it at the dining room table, then that should be where you're working every single day because you want that, you know, your mind to go, okay, it's time to do this activity right now. Versus if you're sitting out in the living room and the TV is there, you know, that's too distracting. So um, again, just trying our best to create as much structure and routine and sticking with the structure and routine that we can um, during this time. So the other things that you can do um, might pertain to, you know, how can you uh, make sure that, you know, you're maintaining your um, usual sleep schedule. And I, again, I think that's really important for um, kids at this time. And then, um, I know we're being placed on a number of limits, but fortunately it seems like um, there's been consistent um, agreement that people can still go outdoors. They can still go out in nature. They can still go for walks. Now, obviously, if you're in a highly populated and densely populated area, this may be challenging um, with the social distancing, uh, but, uh, I would encourage you to look around and, and find places that you can go that maybe don't have um, the same amount of people at, and so that you make sure that you're still going out and, and spending time that way. And then, you know, if you are fortunate enough to still be living with people in your house, um, how can you, you know, do things together? Um, what can you do together that does not um, require you to be connected to a screen, right? Like as much as possible, I think we should be limiting our screen use um, or at least creating like a schedule for how often we're using it, I, as I explained before, um, just to just help manage and not get caught up in the, um, the, the trauma of what's happening. And, you know, that's what the, the news, um, the news sources do. They know that, um, you know, fear is a highly motivating emotion. And so they use that. And so we have to make responsible choices as to how much, you know, we're doing that. And um, so what is available to you in your home um, to continue to do together. So it might be creative stuff together. It might be projects around the house. It might be um, like puzzles, like we're doing a group puzzle. It's just out and about and whoever wants to do it can do it when they feel like it. Um, or it could be, 
you know, playing games. How can you make this time um, that is, is very different from usual be the best that it can be um, versus looking at it as um, a hardship, right? How, how do we find, again, just switching that mind frame to one of gratitude, um, which, you know, decreases our resistance. Whenever there's resistance, there's pain. Um, so when we have gratitude, we that that helps us loosen the strength of that resistance and and get to a greater sense of acceptance of the reality. And this is a new reality. And when we can do that, we can demonstrate to the people that we're holding space for that, hey, they can do that too. That yes, this is difficult um, and we'll get through it. And we can get through it um, without becoming overwhelmed. Um, and you know, for some people that might not be possible They're, they might be triggered to overwhelm based on their history. Um, so how do we help them, you know, manage that as effectively as possible or reduce the amount of overwhelm? And again, I think it comes back to the self-care piece and the little things that we're doing every single day to take care of our mind body and spirit and yeah so anyway i would welcome and love to hear how um you all are managing to maintain a strong self-care routine um in spite of everything that's going on in spite of maybe having to work extra hours on administrative stuff to manage all the changes in your practice um just in spite of everything how are you engaging in your self-care routine um if you want you know let us know on social media you can um, find us at the creative clinicians corner um, either on Facebook or Instagram and share with us there. What are you doing? And um, for those of you that are looking for a little bit extra support in this area, um, you know, if you're interested, you can join us on um, one of our Zoom calls. We'll be having some Zoom calls in April um, in response to this just to kind of you know, create extra, extra space for people um, who might need additional support. And um, the topics aren't necessarily going to be self-care, but it's certainly something that we can discuss as well. Um, on April 6th at 1 p.m., we're going to be doing that Zoom call, and it's going to be focused on telehealth and providing additional supports on how to do it um, effectively and ethically and legally and all of that good stuff. And on the 13th at 1 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time, I should say, too, um, we're going to be really focusing on money mindset. And that definitely comes with the self-care piece, right? Because if you're not attending to your self-care, then you are going to struggle in that area because money evokes fear for many people, especially when there's inconsistency and uncertainty about whether or not you're going to have enough money to continue to pay your bills, your practice bills, all of that stuff. So we're gonna be talking heavily about that and how we can really enhance our money mindset and still um, manage to hold. Um, yes, acknowledge that that fear is there, that it exists, that there's a reason for it, but what can we do um, in response so that we're not getting stuck there? And on the 20th, we're gonna be doing the Zoom call at 1 p.m. and that's really gonna be focused around marketing. How do we continue to market in this environment? Um, a lot of people could have been going out into the community and doing different things and those are now canceled. So how can we continue to market? How can we pivot? How can we shift our mind frame around it and come up with creative strategies for marketing during this time. And it might even relate to, you know, typically this is how I serve, but right now because of 
the greater need, I might need to switch and change what I'm doing and offer something different. And so we'll be talking all about that. If you want to attend one of those um, Zoom meetings, go over to the website, creativecliniciancorner.com, and you'll find the information there. I don't have the exact link set up, um, but we'll put it in the show notes because uh, we're working on that now at the time that I'm recording these. Um, so once we have that set up, you can RSVP, and then we'll see you on that Zoom call um, on one o'clock on one of those Mondays. And um, again, because of the situation that we're in, typically to provide some kind of service like that, it would be a, a fee structured service, but because I want to be able to um, assist everybody right now, because I think we all need the support, um, it's just a donation based um, meeting if you can great. If you can't, great. That's okay. Um, everybody's welcome. And if you leave the call and you're like, you know what, I feel like that was really beneficial. I got so much out of that. And, um, you know, I, 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 I definitely want to contribute. That just helps us to continue to be able to provide support and continue um, to, you know, pay to publish the podcast and stuff like that. So, um, but it's not required, not necessary at all. We want to be able to be available to everybody. So again, thank you so much for tuning in and listening. I hope it was helpful and maybe you leave with some new ideas and strategies for um, your self-care routine and helping your clients maybe with theirs. So, all right, take care, stay well and stay healthy. Thanks for listening to this episode of The Creative Psychotherapist. If you like what you heard, please rate, review, and subscribe wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. For show notes, downloads, and additional resources, head over to the website at www.creativeclinicianscorner.com.